Welcome back to building modern line of business applications with Visual Studio 2010. My name is Orville McDonald. I'm a product manager on the Visual Studio team. And to do a quick recap of what we've shown in the previous parts of our presentation, we started off with um, File New using the Silverlight business application project type. We went through, we started creating our business application by using the designer to add uh, data grids, displaying details for our customers. We added some paging. However, now that we have details and paging and we're able to get all that information up and we're displaying it well, the next thing we need to do is the ability to save data or more appropriately update the data and save it. So what we're going to do now is we're back in our customer details and I'm going to add a few controls. So let me start with a grid. I'll just do a little sizing to get it on there. Uh, add two columns because we're actually going to have two buttons because we're going to have uh, add two pieces of functionality. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add uh, the ability to save information and the second thing we're going to do is add the ability to cancel and this might be the cases where you've updated data however you don't necessarily want that data to persist so we'll actually take that out. Uh, let's give this a name so we'll start off by calling this one the save button and what I want to do is actually want to update the name that appears on it and call it save. The second one, we'll call this one our cancel button. And the content we want to show is cancel. And you'll notice that I'm actually choosing to do this within the designer and I'm using properties to update the different pieces of information. You actually don't have to do that. If you want, you could actually go into the XAML and make the changes there. So we give you the flexibility to uh, do the best way that suits you. In the case of my grid, I want to start off by doing some alignment. So the first thing I want to do is actually I want to adjust my horizontal alignment and I want to put this on the right. You'll notice that as my grid moves to the right, it actually carries the buttons with them. Uh, looking back at my designer, I want to change these two buttons. I want to align them up. So I'll just select both of them at the same time. Now I'll, you'll notice that within properties, I actually have multiple buttons selected. So I could actually update both of these at the same time. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is this width. Let me set that to auto. Also the height. I want it set to auto as well. With my horizontal alignment, I want to stretch it. And also with my vertical alignment, I want to stretch that as well. So we can see that it's starting to, to fill out, but it's not all the way there yet. So there's a few more things I want to do. With my layout, uh, let me add a margin to it. Actually, I'll just type it in here. Set my margin to 6. Okay, so that's starting to look a little better for my padding. Uh, let me just throw this in here. So now I have my padding in there. Now that it's starting to look a little better, let me uh, go back to my grid. So I've now selected my grid. And let me change the width here also to auto. And then for my height, let me do auto again. It's getting a little closer. Uh, what are some other things I want to change with it? So I have my horizontal alignment to right, and I have my vertical alignment to top. That's actually starting to, to look good. And actually, I want to do one more thing. I want to move that to up here. Great. So I have that starting to come into play. So I've updated my designer. We see that now I have a grid. I have my two buttons. But now I need to bind them so they actually could go and do something. So the first thing I want to do is actually want to start with my save button. Now that I have my source, there's a few options that we could choose. So the first thing I want to do is I want to select my element name, just like what we did before with our stack panel, really binding kind of the width. But in this case, I actually want to combine with something else. I want to combine to my customer domain data source. So I've now selected that and when I go to my path, we can see that I have a few options. In this case, I want to bind it to submit changes. And then now that's been uh, binded in order to, for me to make saves. One thing you'll notice is that it's now listed as disabled. The reason why you're seeing the show up as disabled is there's no changes that have been made. So only once a change is made will that then become enabled. Now if I select my cancel, I'll just go and do the same thing. So what we're going to do now is actually pretty similar to what we did before. 
Except in this case, instead of choosing the submit, I'm actually going to choose the reject. Now that one's disabled as well. So you can see that because there's no changes to be saved and no changes to cancel, we now have both of these disabled. So let's go and run the application and let's see how this looks. So now we have our application up and running just as we've seen it before. We see that we have a list of company names, we have paging that's supported. So now let's go see what our update functionality looks like. So I click on our first customer, we see them uploaded, we see that both the save and the cancel are actually disabled at this time. We see that they're in Berlin, but let's say I change that to Munich. Tab out, we notice that both my save and my cancel are now enabled. I click cancel, it automatically converted back to Berlin. So this time, let me commit the change. So I'll call this Munich, tab out, see I have save and cancel. In this case, I click save, and we can see if I go back to my customer list, go back to this company, we can see that it says uh, Munich, and then once again, if I type Munich and I tab out, you'll actually notice that my save and my canceled are still disabled, right? And this is one thing I really want to underscore is that one of the great things about this is that it's smart enough to know that just because you edited a field, if you didn't actually make any changes, there's nothing actually to save. So it keeps those disabled. It's only when you make an actual change that you have to update that. So if I go in and I type Berlin instead of Munich, tab out, once again we see save and canceled are now enabled. So in this case, I'm going to save Berlin back, go back to my customer list, so we can see that we've actually just gone in and quite easily added the ability to update data within our application and also got some additional rich functionality that we could use. So in this case, now that we've updated data, now let's go and add some validation to it. As part of validation, we also get some really cool things. And uh, that validation is based partially on the data that's within our system. So for example, let's go to a postal code. So within our database, we know that postal codes can only be 10 characters long. So if I take this one, and let's say I make it even longer, and I tab out, we notice that now I actually get an error. And you'll notice that the text box where the postal code is is now in red. And I put my mouse over it. It tells me that the field postal code must be a string with a maximum length of 10. And that's because it knows within the database it could only store 10 characters. And that's some free validation that we end up getting. So if I go back here and I click cancel, we see that it goes back to the original information. Now another thing that we could do too is we could actually declare our own custom validation rules. And we'll actually give that a try right now. So as I close my application, we'll go back and this time we're going to go back to our metadata file. So here we have it. And in this case what we want to do is we want to make sure that all fax numbers conform to US fax standards. Not saying that you'll do this for your application, you may want to use different formats depending on where in the world you are and what it is you're trying to do. But in this case, we're just going to focus on that. So if I go through and I add a code snippet, and the thing to note is that this is a regular expression that was just taken off the internet. You could create your own regular expressions or you could go online and find different ones to use. Now that we have this added into our code, I want to point out a few things. So the first is that you have the regular expression here. We also have the ability to add our own custom error message, which has also been included. So now that we have this information, the next step is let's run our application and let's see this regular expression in action. So with our application up and running now, We'll go through and let's select a US customer. Go through here, scroll a bit. So let's pick on this restaurant. You can see here that they have their fax number. And what I could do now is let's just add a non conforming US fax number. As I tab through, we see once again I get my text box in red. As I mouse over it, it indicates to me only US fax numbers supported. And this is actually the 
error message that I had written before as part of my regular expression. And I'll cancel that one out now. So thank you for joining me for this part of our presentation, and I hope you join me for the next and final part where we discuss authentication and personalization within building a modern line of business applications.